Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This video is really a chat about the best laid plans that sometimes just don't work out as well as the original plan, but may actually, with a little bit of thought, become a bonus. Um, I'll, I'll go over some ideas. This tallest shelf here, tallest shelf unit, that's that's a five shelf unit which when I got it, when I ordered it, I thought I can get a lot of plants on there and it's tall so the top shelf will be perfect for my Cattleya types. That was the plan. <laughs> and you can see what actually happened. Because a, a classic example is like you've got an Oncidium type and the plant itself is not that large. Yeah, so you, you could imagine, like, where, where is one? <laughs> Here's a typical example. Yeah, the gap between these two shelves is not that large. Yeah, now quite a few of my Oncidium plants would fit on there nicely, but not once they chuck a spike up. Now that wouldn't have been in the plan. I wouldn't have thought of that originally. So, you know, there's quite a few of my plants that can go on one shelf when they're not in bloom and then when the spike starts pushing up they've, they've got to go on a shelf where there is room and the way I've done it is to take shelves out now these types of units are dependent on their structural integrity shall we say with these crossbars yeah because you get one each end yeah and in some cases you can have one in the middle now, why have I got one in the middle on that shelf do you think just think of the weight. Think of the weight of that. Think of the weight of these cattleyas all in clay pots. The pot's got weight to it as well as the size and weight of the plants. This is a strong shelf. It's got three support bars. But it also makes the whole unit incredibly top heavy. I mean they don't wobble much but if I start wobbling that the weight on the top is not good. So it needs to stay still. So although I've taken this shelf out I've left the two support bars in. Down here I've taken a risk and removed one of the support bars and that's really because I was having so much trouble getting that cylogeny in and out of there with that bar in the way. So I took it out and took a risk. Now the, the, the structure is not going to collapse because it's a top down weight. There's no side pressure on these shelves. The weight starts at the top and pushes downwards so these are the supports for that top shelf these are really for sideways sort of strength and to hold the racks obviously they need something to sit on but then you get a bonus by taking some shelves out I got some of these so I've got places to hang things with lots of places to position their hooks so that they can be adjusted up and down. So that, that was a bonus that was unexpected. Because originally when I bought the shelves, all the shelves were going to be in place. And I've had to do this in several places because plants can get tall. I mean, this shelf here, most of the plants on there would be touching this shelf if it was in place. So I needed some height, so just took the wire grid off. And that allows them to go up. Um, now over here, the idea with these two units were they were dirt cheap because they're actually quite small. But put two together and you get a double width. Now that's a good idea, apart from, for some reason, they're not exactly the same height. Um, which means plants where the join is are, are, are a bit of an angle. Um, also, these wire grids not ideal for small pots they keep tipping over you know unless you can get the base of the pot exactly on the square they tip so stability can come into question um, but nonetheless look at the airflow I mean there's no restriction on the airflow around the grow room at all the only restriction on the airflow is the plants themselves getting in the way which is good that's what the airflow is for <laughs> you know, is to get to the plants but you can see as plants grow, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> this really can only live on a top shelf. It's not in bloom at the moment. That's the Miltonia Sunset.
but I haven't got anywhere else to put it. It's got to stay on the top shelf. I mean, that dendrobium at the back. You know, I mean, look at the height of the flipping thing. Um, now, to get round a height problem with quite a few of my dendrobiums is relatively simple. Turn them upside down. Let them hang. Now, hanging space I've got loads of. Yeah? And I can always add a wire from the support beams and hang plants up there. So hanging space I'm not restricted by. But then you start thinking, hang on, if these plants are going to go up there and hang, that's all very well. But this little unit of shells here, I've had to take the top off of it. Because if there was a shelf across here, what could I put on it? It would be forever getting knocked by these plants as I take them down to water them. So I lost a shelf there, which is not a big deal actually, I mean, there's still more than enough room to get all my plants in now. I mean quite honestly I have actually got a lot of space nowadays, a lot more than I used to have. That back shelf over there has only got four pots on. And again, to get height I took this shelf out of the front unit of the two, yeah, so that plants could go down there. Um, but I do have an environmental thing here going on. That inlet fan in the corner, now that the heat's gone, now we've dropped the heat wave, when that comes on, that's quite cool air coming in there compared with the temperature in here. So it works like a cooling breeze. So anything that needs to stay cooler gets down there in that arena there. Yeah, that, that's where the cooler air comes in. Now obviously when that fan comes on, that one comes on as well and sucks the hot air out. That's the purpose, they work together. But to get to the temperature where they kick on, my circulating fans are on. And once they turn on, the temperature differences in here are very limited because they really stir the air up. So I get a much more uniform temperature until that inlet fan comes on, at which point I do have a cool area. Yeah? And I need that cool area when those temperatures climb up. So the plan with the fans worked great. That's all working fine until you get a heat wave and the outside temperature is 32 degrees, in which case the air that I'm sucking in is the same temperature as what's already in here. So they almost defeat the object. <laughs> that doesn't happen often. But it happened badly this year. So, um, you know, I mean, if you're going to go for Vanders, you know, they need the best light possible. That's why they're up near the roof. That is the best light possible. There's not even any shade netting above them. They do get very bright light there. But they also produce long dangly roots. So they've got to have somewhere to be. I mean, you know, that, that's not a large Vander as Vanders go. And I must say that did lose quite a few of its lower leaves this year. Um, but, you know, the plant from top to bottom is about four and a half feet. You know, one and a third metres-ish. That's a lot of plant to accommodate, especially if you were growing indoors. And these can get in the way of other things. So I've even had to plan which vanders go where. The one up there in the basket hasn't got very long roots. It has an extensive root system, but it's more compact. So I can just about get a plant underneath that one. <laughs> just. I mean, they, they do touch, but, you know, it's no big deal. But this one, that's the only place it can go, really, where it can get good light and be accommodated. I mean, when the fog is in place, that's how it's being filled up at the moment. Oh, I must get these cleaned. Where I've had to switch from using RO water to using the filter jug, there's obviously still calcium in the tap water, even though it's been filtered. And, um... These need a clean. That's calcium. That's out of the water. Um, I can't. I'll be switching back to using RO water in the foggers soon. They'll get a good clean, get off all the calcium and any algae that might have just about started on the inside. But with the dark casings on these types, um, this one does get a little bit of algae now and again. But it's, it's not extensive. It's limited and it does does clean off reasonably easy but it's because that although that's got clouded glass it is in a very very bright situation whereas this one isn't this one never gets algae <laughs> it's the same unit but it just doesn't get enough light it's too many plants in the way 
you know, the direction of the bright light is limited by the plants that it hits. So, um, yeah, so sometimes your plans don't work out as well as the original plan, but nonetheless you might get a bonus. I mean, my Paphiopedalums live quite happily on that shelf. They're not going to touch the shelf above them, but the spikes might. Yeah? But then, they're not going to stay right up the back there in the dark, from my viewing point of view, if they've got a spike coming. They'll come up here where I can see them, and then they've got the height. So a lot of the plants that are in bloom are there for two reasons. So that the spikes don't bang into anything above them, and I can see them. You know, this is, I, guess I like, you know, my display, my flowers, which is a bit thin on the ground at the moment, nearer eye level, eye level rather, rather than somewhere where I can't see them. I mean, even my little telumni has come down because it's open now. Well, they live up there with their back to me. There's no point in having blooms pointing away that I'm never going to see. So I, I do move plants when they come into bloom. I think there's another spike coming on one of these up here as well. Yeah, this one. See, now this one is going to have a long spike. And where's that spike heading? It's heading straight for the roof. So I've got to keep my eye on that little plant. Close eye, because Tillumnia spikes move quite quickly. Because if the bud end of that spike touches the roof, they'll burn. Or well, they may burn. So I've got to stop that happening. So um, although it can stay up there for now, because the weight of the plant keeps the you know, the angle is slight, so the, the spike is still two inches from the roof. But I've got to keep my eye on it, you know. And, uh, and it's possible that even some of these larger catlias, they're getting quite near to the roof now. Well, if they happen to produce a long spike, you know, the blooms will be virtually touching the roof. So that will have to come down somewhere. So it'll have to come perhaps down to here, so that it's got the height above it. So I'm always moving things around, but I do still have distinct areas. Um, as I said, the, the, the ones that are distinctively cooler growers, <laughs> which strangely enough is one of my um, phalaenopsis, the Sidera japonica, is renowned for liking it a bit cooler, so that lives on the floor. Um, this is a Dendrobium uh, delicatum, I think that is. That was a single cane kiki that I got cheap off of um, Sarah from Burnham's. I mean, it's, it's produced two new canes. Whether it will bloom or not, um, you know, end of the winter, I don't know, probably not. It might do, it might have a single spike somewhere. But um, it, it's growing on, but that's a cool grower. So it lives on the floor. It's not a high light lover, p particularly. I've got a feeling that Delicatum is actually a naturally occurring hybrid in the wild. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. But my Nelly Isle is on the floor. If it lives, it's not doing very well. <laughs> there's a few, there's, there's some of the Sologenes, my Lady Anseps on the floor. My odontoglossum types are on the floor, yeah? So, yeah, I move things around, but that is my only cool area, and, and it's in the direct line of fire of the inlet fan. And that, even with the circulating fans on, is still cool, because the, the inlet fan is dominant in that area, so uh, cooler areas down there. Um, but yeah, the bonus of taking some of the shelves off to gain some height for the plants is that I get suitable hanging racks for some of the other plants because these are very good as hanging things they, they only need a couple of hooks to hold them up you know well well attached obviously you don't want the whole rack falling down oh this is coming on Ooh. see the buds on this orangus are forming their spurs now at length uh, once that happens the buds start to swell quite quickly and we've got five spikes on that to come in succession, starting from the left probably, <laughs> coincidentally, <laughs> there's two plants there and the lower plant, um, the two spikes on that plant will be slightly successive but the one on the left is definitely more advanced than the one next to it and then these three up here will follow on afterwards. I don't think they're hugely long lasting, um, probably a couple of weeks, maybe three but with the succession, it should be in bloom possibly as long as two months overall. So really looking forward to that. And just because the buds are green, the blooms aren't. They're white. <laughs> they may have a greenish tinge, possibly, or a pinkish tinge. Rengus do have tinges on them. You don't get bright colours. They're, they're, fundamentally, they are white. 
but you do get creamy coloured ones, ones with little pinky bits or brownish hues of brown, just touches here and there, and touches of green definitely, that that's, sits in there quite nicely. But yeah, that's going to be a good, good blooming. And that's going nowhere this year, absolutely nowhere. Last year that bloomed, I took it to the Orchid Society and the next day it dumped all its blooms. It didn't like the journey in the car and being in a dry atmosphere for quite a long period during the meeting and then another journey in the car. Um, so it's not, it's not leaving the building this time. I really want to enjoy these blooms. I didn't see much of them last time. I got about a week out of the bloom spikes and then took it to a, a meeting. Uh, so I won't be doing that again, that's for sure. <laughs> But yeah, best laid plans. Um, things that really do help me. Um, the humidistats for the foggers, uh, I wouldn't be without them. To actually control those manually, firstly, means I have to be here to both turn them on and turn them off. So if we started with a sunny day and I turned both of these on, yeah, and then went out for the rest of the day and it clouded over and started to rain, yeah, they'd be on and I wouldn't get any much of a temperature in here on a day like that. So I'd have a room full of steam that's very cool in a room that's cooling down and there would be plants that would not like that environment at all. Yes, they like the humidity, but they don't like it cool as well. Some do, but not many. I mean, these would probably love it down here, <laughs> but these wouldn't. You know, you get up 90, 95% humidity and your temperature drops down below 15 degrees, these are going to suffer. They're not going to like that. That's, that's too much. And remember that foggers produce cool mist. The process, ultrasonics, is a bit like the evaporative cooling effect on clay. It does drop the temperature a bit and the mist that comes out of there is quite cool. Now on a warm day, that's brilliant. But the little humidistats that control those, I wouldn't be without those, because it means I can walk away. And for the sake of about, I think that's about 12 quid on eBay. I mean, they are cheap and cheerful, and they're right faff to wire, but once they're in place, they, they, they just do their job. And the humidity reading on there is not that accurate, unfortunately, whereas this one is. So what I do is I use the humidity on that one to say what the humidity really is and then just adjust this one to come on at the point I want irrespective of what that says if you see what I mean I actually use the true humidity reading and adjust that accordingly so they're a bit of a faff but they do their job and also thermostats you know the, all the fans are controlled by thermostats the, these come on when the temperature reaches 24 below that I don't need a force 8 gale but once that temperature starts to rise, they have a cooling effect. Move the air around, so they're on a thermostat. As are the inlet and the outlet, the inlet and outlet fans. But they're on a totally different setting. They, they come on when the temperature on the unit reaches 28. Now that might sound high, but that's where the sensor is, right up in the roof. So although it might say 28 degrees up there, it's probably only about 25 down here. So I've averaged it basically, but that's when they kick on. And again, without the thermostats, I'd have to be here. And this little air cleaner, which I'm not even sure if that does any good, but <laughs> I suppose it does. It cleans the air um, and that just stays on as do the little computer fans. So, so they've, they've got no automation at all. They've just got an on-off on switch and it's permanently on. They, they never shut down. So, you know, a little bit of automation can help. And a, a lot of these things are not very good in the home. If you start chucking out fog at the rate these do in a house, you'll start getting green carpets and curtains because you will get algae forming. You know, so it's not ideal. So perhaps a smaller unit on a timer maybe that just comes on for an amount of time and then shuts off for a while so that the humidity doesn't get too silly and make your curtains go green. <laughs> Unless you've got green curtains anyway, in which case it won't show. Now that's planning. <laughs> anyway, with my low count of blooms, there's not much else to uh, discuss. We've filmed all those recently. I watered every single plant in here yesterday. 
Every, even, even the pinguiculars got their trays topped up. Every single plant in here, and it took most of the day. And because the mounts were left till last, they didn't get done till well into the afternoon, so they don't need doing today. Even if we get a warm day, they'll, they'll be fine till tomorrow. So, and I'm planning ahead to make sure that when I go off on holiday Saturday, uh, Thursday afternoon, everything's been watered, yeah? That reduces any effort that my daughter's got to do. She won't have to water anything in pots. She will have to keep her eye on my hanging Dracula though, and the tray, the water in the tray of the other two. Um, but apart from that, if all the pot, pot, pots are watered before I go, they'll be fine. If she wants to be brave and do the holy clay pots once, she's welcome to have a go. They're, they're pretty easy to get at and there's not a huge number of them. I mean, she's been in here when I've been watering, she knows what goes on. And the idea with the mounts is that um, if she wants to do these manually, like I do, the ones that are easily accessible, then that will be fine, you know, because they're easy to take down and put back up again. But getting at these is not funny. These have to be taken down so carefully because with the length of the canes, they knock pots over. Yeah? So they're actually, you know, I'd prefer she just sprayed those. But she'll manage, and we'll have a chat about it on uh, Wednesday and Thursday morning when she's here about what she can and can't do and um, what to keep her eye on and what not to forget. <laughs> These are easily forgotten. The mounted Phalaenopsis. They're easily forgotten. I've forgotten them before now. I've done all the mounts and I go to update my notes and as I go down the notes I think, oh no, I've forgotten those again. And it's just where they are. You know, they're not shouting at me. They're not right in my line of sight like all this lot is. Yeah. So anyway, plans change. That's, that's all I can say. As I said, my original plan for that tall shelf was to probably have 50 plants on it. Well, I had to rearrange things and I had to take some shelves out. So I've only ended up with three shelves, really, instead of five. So that's quite a lot less shelf space than I thought originally. But it does enable me to have tall plants. And it does enable me to have an area with, for cool plants. You know, ones that get that cooler air. So, uh, yeah. As you make a plan, I would suggest you can probably expect to change it. <laughs> Once you start doing things for real, in practice, in situ, you're not often quite, not quite what you thought. And you might have to change your mind a little bit. Um, but, you know, that, that's, that's half the fun of it, is thinking on the fly, you know. Just thinking, actually, that plant would be better there. But to go there, I'm going to have to move that and that. Where can they go? And you start shuffling. And that might be for one single plant. But moving some of the others isn't a bad, you know, isn't a problem. They can go somewhere else and still be okay, if you see what I mean. But certain plants do need quite specifics, you know, especially where light's concerned anyway. I mean, anything that's not hanging from the roof or on a top shelf doesn't get such good light in the summertime when the sun's high. Yeah? But as in the spring and the autumn, when the sun's lower in the sky and the angle's reduced, the light comes in through the sides. So all the shelves get good light. And the only place I can reduce the light is to get plants nearer the center of the room, which is quite easy. They just go on this end of the shelf instead of that end of the shelf, side of the shelf, sorry. Yeah? So certainly in the winter and a lot of the spring and the autumn, the best light is coming in from the sides, not the top. It's only during the, you know, the, the, the three, three and a half months of peak summertime when the si sun's very high in the sky. Um, in which case, the light's probably a bit bright for some of the plants. So being on a lower shelf does the job. So it's all sort of planning and um, all good fun. Anyway, I've got no watering to do today. I've got some watering to, outside to do or my bonsai are going to die if they don't. <laughs> They'll think their throats have been cut and they're getting no water. Well, we were expecting rain and we didn't get it, so we have to intervene. But apart from that, I haven't got much to do. I've got a kitchen session to do, um, which will probably get filmed today but posted tomorrow. And I'm out all day tomorrow, all the biggest part of it. So if I've got a video ready, I can post it before I go in the morning. And uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, don't, don't expect an original plan to stand forever.
plants have to change. Things have to adapt to, to the plants. And you'll always, if you keep increasing your stock <laughs> and keep buying orchids, your plants will constantly change. Um, space being the issue, obviously. You've got acres of space, by all means get some more orchids. But there'll come a time when you make a spontaneous buy. Ooh, pretty blooms, I love that. That'll, go, that'll be okay in my environment, that'll do well, and look at the colour, yeah, I'm having that, and you get it home, you think, now where the hell am I going to put that? And then you have to move lots of plants to get this nice, big, shiny plant that you've just bought. So plans change, nothing's set in stone. And the, the, the beauty of that is it keeps you on your toes, it keeps you thinking, constantly thinking. Nothing is set in stone. You know, I mean, I can quite safely say that there are no plants in here that have spent more than a year in the same place. Yeah, and some of that is because I've got new shelves in. So I've changed their position. I won't be getting any more shelves. There is no room for me to be able to work and water. I need that room and I'm not doing it anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, even this little one, I think that's my latest addition. It took me ages to find one that small. Now, I wanted the height, but I, that, that was the space I had, that little space there. And again, I got that as a five shelf unit and I had to take two out, so it's, only, it's ended up as three. Yeah, but it's a perfect place for all my little stuff. So for that alone, I'd have got it. And the bonus was some other stuff can go in there as well. So, uh, yeah, plans change. And... Uh, on that front, I need to get outside and water my plants and uh, fill up the other fogger and then um, I can leave this place in peace for the rest of the day and get on with other stuff. See you next time. Bye for now.